You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. The amazing Amanda, Amanda Seals. Seals. Yay! Hey, guys. First of all, I want to thank Amanda for being a uh, great tour guide in Grenada. <sighs> Her, her, is that your that's home island right yeah, yeah. citizenship he discovered citizenship. sour sap and he hasn't started stopped talking about oh, it oh man Noth- all of the healing properties uh, nothing makes you relax like sour sap tea <laughs> I drink a cup before bed I literally bought like 10 bags of sour sap tea I'm really impressed because you came to Grenada and like a lot of times I feel like since Grenada's not a touristy Grenada has tourism but it's not geared towards tourism in the same way that like Jamaica or Barbados is like mm-hmm. you'll have folks come that are just like, well, why isn't this so, e-? you know, why isn't this this way or why isn't this yeah. that way? And you guys were so just like laid back, willing to try anything. Absolutely. You know, yeah, the Wax had a monkey on his shoulder. Yes. You know, yeah, that's it. Yeah. I love an island that you can go explore and they, they encourage you to go see the yes. island. Yes. Mm-hmm. And you were really into the culture. Yes. You know, sometimes you get Americans that come to these places and they really don't care about the culture. Mm-hmm. They're just like, where's that beach? <laughs> Where can I get braids? Word. And claim that Bo Derek did it. Yeah. <laughs> I've never been to Grenada. I was wondering, is it kind of similar to Montserrat? Because when you go to Montserrat, where my mom is from, I was there mm-hmm. for Thanksgiving. And like, it's like, if you want to go to the restaurant, some of them, you have to tell them in advance so that they'll be open. <laughs> it's true. We're not as... We're not as like islandy as that, but I feel like that's because like we've switched from like a purely agricultural economy to like having to really step up our tourism. Mm-hmm. So there really is like a great amount of like once upon a time it was like that where when I would go to Grenada like you're not having dinner just casually. Right. Like you got to really <laughs> plan. And now like they have cuisine. We don't just have restaurants. We have cuisine, you cuisine. know, and Grenadian cuisine and oil dung and, you know, fried jacks and waters. <laughs> and it's like all these things, you know, that people are like, oh, this is Grenada cuisine. It's not just like getting a roti and doubles in Flatbush. I feel like I understand you better, too, because Grenada <laughs> people are very nice, but very blunt and to the point. And we, and we was in a restaurant. It's a cultural thing. We was in a restaurant. And I didn't know if a fight was about to break out or not. Yeah, that's like you and the lady got Amanda and like, the waitress. Was, it wasn't an argument, though. I just no. think that was regular Grenada conversation. Yeah, but it you was. never got your water, though. We. Charlie <laughs> <laughs> said everybody ordered water. You never got your water. <laughs> it just ended up being where it's like you have to really get straight yeah. ahead with it because it's almost like passive aggressive aggressive. It's yeah. Like so, unless you really go straight in, like listen. This is what I need to happen. We need to figure out how we're getting these orders done. We need to figure out a, a practical way that we can make sure that we get out of here in time for New Year's. And once I got... <laughs> All know, that for ordering food? Yes. But that's Sheesh. just, you right. know, that's Island Life. And you're life. supposed to go places, I guess, without the intention of being in a rush. Oh, no. that's no. part of what it is. Like, oh, that ain't yeah, No, that's every island. There's, yeah, there's no... <laughs> there's no rushing. There's no, can we get this to go? Right. <laughs> like, you've waited the same amount yeah, of time. So... But How thank you for you coming. There? Every time I saw your Instagram, I was like, she's still in Grenada. <laughs> <laughs> I actually took my time because I have a really hectic year planned. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, you know what? Let me just simmer down. I took 10 days in Grenada. I started writing. And, you know, the thing about it is that I realized, like, I don't really care about a New Year's party. I care about, like, where I wake up on New Year's because mm-hmm. I feel like it just sets the tone for the year. Absolutely. Serenity, peace. You know, it was just like I wake up, the sun is shining, Mm -hmm. you know, the beach is there. And I feel very fortunate to be able to do that after years of waking up in New York on New Year's. And you're just like, back to this shit. (laughs) It's cold. It's It's cold. cold, Yes. And somebody's going to curse me out today. And I might slip on vomit on the train from last night. (laughs) So Now, now where do we start with Amanda Seals? It's so much I want to touch. Like, I love what you said. And we've talked about this. You said men love pussy but hate women. I said some men. Some men, yes, not all men. men. My bad, yeah, that's that's a whole other argument. Some men. Some men. I've just been seeing that quite a bit, like, especially when you see dudes who are, like, fearless about it, like this Jay, whatever day person. Um, What? Jay Holiday. Oh, okay. I was confused. I called him whatever day. Whatever day, It's another irrelevant holiday. (laughs) Groundhog Day, you know, National Hat Day, Jay Holiday, all the same thing. Mm -hmm. Because it's really become this thought process that says, like, as women rise, men think they're falling. And that's just false. You know, it's it should be incredibly 
um, ridiculous. It's incredibly ridiculous to consider the rise of women to be the fall of men. Just the way that white supremacy literally stands on the shoulders of, oh, if anybody else has power, then we don't have power. Yes. You know, and that mm-hmm. is a complete fallacy. So when you hear men who are really ardently like, you know, stop empowering these women. You know, women need to know that like they need to stay in their place. It's like, what do you know what you're saying? Mm-hmm, and I right. think honestly, what they don't really realize that they're saying is that we're weak. Yeah. We're only mm-hmm. strong if you're not as yeah. strong as us. That's what you're really saying as a man when you say that. So I really feel like a lot of dudes, when we as women are like, why are y'all biting us so hard on this? Mm-hmm. Like, why? Like, I know a lot of women who are just like, why do brothers fight with us so mm-hmm. hard? <laughs> like, why are you so oh, mad at me time. all mm-hmm. the time? And then brothers fight other brothers who help support sisters. And it's like, right. why? And then you realize it's like, you don't, li- you just don't like me, nigga. Yeah. Like, you don't like me. You like my body parts and what that makes you feel like physically. But in terms of like me as a person, in terms of me as like an ex- someone who exists in this world with dreams, you don't really want to see that happen because for some reason you think that that is going to prevent you from achieving yours. And the more that we can close that chasm and understand that like it's it's not that way, we should be uplifting each other regardless of gender, et cetera, then I think the better off we'll be, especially in a black love space. I, it's interesting because no matter how far you think you've come, you realize how we haven't. Like Ooh, just two Angela. examples in the past day. Um, Baller Alert did this ballerific, you know, they did a post on me and some guy wrote, yeah, you know, she had to F somebody to get in that position. She F'd everyone up at the station. What, did you that- post on Baller Alert? <laughs> yeah, Damn. underneath the post. <laughs> Jesus and, Christ. And just, so they, like, I didn't even have time. Said, you know Jeez. she F'd everyone. There's thousands of employees at iHeart. Okay? Oh, not at Baller <laughs> Alert to make it in the way she's but at then, now. For um, the record, I was accused of sucking Charlotte dick in the job, too. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the record. And then the second second thing was um, Angela Rye was on here and I posted a picture and I deleted the comments, but somebody was like, oh, Charlemagne's definitely up on her. That's why she's always up there. Why aren't you just up here on your own merit just because you have a... And it's crazy to me and it's guys that are saying that. Always. Cardi talked about that. I talked about that. Like dudes really be in their whack-ass lives mad at you Mm -hmm. for living your best one. And I'm like, it's not like there's not a track record. It's not like we just pop up, like, ta-da. Right. You know, like, I just popped up from somebody's <laughs> dick, like, ta-da, here now. <laughs> <laughs> you know? like, that's not how this turned out. If it was that easy, where did you dick or something? <laughs> like, and I easy. always say, I always say, like, this: there's, there's no secrets to success. Right. There's either working hard or fucking somebody that's working hard. Mm. That's it. There's only two routes. Does and that truly work, though? Can you just fuck? I, I still think you gotta I have think talent. I think you still, still have, have to have a certain level, but I think in terms of access to certain spaces. Will yeah, you stay true. in that space? Maybe not if you don't Probably have the not. ability. Right. Will you get your foot in the door for certain reasons? Possibly. You'll get your ass in the door. But if, are you going to be there 20 years later excelling and getting promoted and getting You looks? don't even have the stamina. No. You don't, right. Well, maybe you do. They might have the stamina. Uh, <laughs> I was and plus, say. it's a new woman turning 18 every day. So those guys are just going to, you know, go find something Re- new. Keep you recycling. Yeah. But <laughs> even like, I mean, I've known all of y'all for forever. Like, y'all have all seen like my, you know, my grind and whatnot. So it's like, it's Angela, the same thing. Like, we've seen you for so long. But so, I've seen like, your hate up up front. Like, it seems like they wanted you to die. Like, they hated <laughs> you. Every job that I've seen you at, I was like, I, I was like, Amanda's not a bad person. I don't, I don't that understand. That goes back to women, though. That goes back to, like, this insecurity men have with women. Because if uh, you were a guy acting the way that you acted, they'd be like, oh, she's she a, a boss. boss. Right. right. Yeah. She well, I've been no getting shit. this thing lately where I've been getting men that are like, she's masculine. Like she's, what? yeah, she's masculine. She's, um, Amanda Seals is, not, she's pretty, but she's not sexually attractive because, and there's never a because, right? Mm-hmm. Like it's always just like, we're just saying that. And then the next conversation is, you know, she be talking too much. So <laughs> anybody can put that together. Oh, you think I'm masculine and not sexually attractive because I have opinions because you feel like only men should get the, the, plat- the platform to speak. And I'll, I'm not going to lie, like, I think people think because of my Instagram, like, who I am on Instagram, like, they think that I'm not sensitive, mm-hmm. even though, like, I'm a cancer, so I'm, like, full sensitive, <laughs> like, at all times. Cancer, yeah. Boy, yeah. Yes. You already know. Um, but also just as a woman, like, 
I really take pride in my womanhood and like my femininity. And yes, I have like tomboy aspects, but at the end of the day, it's like someone telling me I'm masculine, like that will start to, <laughs> just cause that's not what I'm going for. Like that's not what I'm about. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. It's not what I'm going for. Look at all this snack. <laughs> Look at these clavicles. Like, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, but, but it's so, anno- it's so like unnerving to know that literally just by being an intellectual and being fearless about speaking on it, that dude's is like, ah, like I can't, she's never gonna get a man. You told me that before. Wow, Ooh, I can see that. I, I remember did? that, yes, back in, <laughs> wow. I can back see in that. our POV days on Hip Hop POV, Charlamagne was like, you ain't never gonna get a man because you got too many opinions and you you know, you just, you, you, you just be talking too much and like dudes they want, don't wanna hear that. And I feel like, I, people be like, why are you friends with him? A lot of people say that. Yeah. That was two years ago. But I'm gonna tell way. you. But <laughs> I'm gonna say. <laughs> no, but it's because <laughs> I see. I've seen change. Mm-hmm. You know, like there's people that, especially like, especially like people you date, where you're just like, I'm changing. I'm working on myself, but you not. Mm-hmm. So how can I continue to be with you mm-hmm. when I'm doing work and you're not? We may not be doing work at the same pace, but you literally ain't doing shit, nigga. Yeah. Like your work is you trying to figure out like what's the what's the next kind of weed I can find. You know, like that's what you're considering work. Whereas like I'm really genuinely working on myself. And with you, I feel like you're li- really genuinely working on yourself. Every and sometimes day. people don't see that because of your demeanor or they think you're like strong and wrong. And I think sometimes it's really just you're just like, I haven't figured this out. And I'm going to just be solid in the fact that I don't know what this is. Absolutely. And I'll figure it out later. But that's part of the reason why like we are friends, because we can disagree on things and just be like, Jake. Absolutely. Another reason I probably said that too is because y- y'all like to date regular guys, and, I, and there's nothing wrong with what, guys who aren't guy? in the industry. What's a regular guy? By the way, industry guys are regular too. But this is what I'm saying though. What's a regular guy? When you're dating a guy who's not in the industry, because I get this on Instagram industry, all day. Do you date regular guys? That's hard. That's that. Like you already talking about guys that are insecure. That makes them double insecure. Well, just for the, the record, is insecure as well. Thank you. Yeah, and well, knows my whole track insecure. record, and they're oh, all insecure. insecure because especially the same thing. They see her working, they don't want her to surpass what they're doing. It's the same thing. But how do you think a guy that's not in the industry at all feels? I think that is sometimes it's even better. Yeah, because then you don't have to talk about work stuff We're not when competing. you're with them. You're learning something from that somebody works for a little while. who is in it a does. whole another field. Which it works I think for is a little great. while. But do you know what ends up happening a Until lot of times? Until he don't get that invite to the Rock Nation brunch with. <laughs> 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 I think sometimes, like I live a very free life. You know, I'm a very free person. Like, you, look at here. I'm in here in my Wakanda. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving you full Black Panther vibes right now. And um, in my official Janaki. And I live a free life because I've made my life that way. Mm-hmm. Not by, like, easy. Not, like, by an easy path, but I've lived that way. And then I think a lot of times, like, you'll meet people that aren't living their life that way. Like, they feel, like, chained to a job. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Or they feel like they're not in the career they want. And then they start to resent. The mm. fact that you're living your dream. Do you think that guys also feel intimidated because you don't need them for anything? Girl. Because I feel like Angela, that's an issue. Talk. Because I know for me, sometimes it's hard for me to give up my independence. But in a way, you have to need your mate for certain things or at least make them feel necessary. Like, even if it's me saying, look, I need your advice on something. You're the only yes! person I can talk to. Can you call this Uber? Right. <laughs> just certain things that, and sometimes I feel like. Don't just try to make me feel it's good, hard. though. Like, need me for something. I have like, to, because I, I don't really need you. I don't really need you. I don't. Really need you, give me your advice. But anyway. I want you. And I just feel there's so much more power in want. Right. I really do. Like, I feel like need is something that's beyond your control, it's not a choice. Making choice is definitive of your character. The choices that you make are literally defining of your character. So when you make the choice to say, I want to rock with you, that to me is way more stronger than I need to rock with Mm -hmm. you because really then you could be anybody that has these things. The choice is that like, I really, I'm good. I'm a complete person. You really are the cherry on top. The Sunday would have been just as good without the cherry. But you know what? The cherry gives it another level. And you know, the cherry's really, for the look, by the way. You the really care about somebody when you can accept something from them, too. Because it's hard for me to accept something from you if I know I don't feel a way about you because I don't mm. want to feel like oh, I just like took something from you. I don't even like you like that, but now I feel a little bit indebted. If I really care about you, then I'll accept what it is that you have to give me. See, I accept th- that my problem is not even accepting physical things, is that I will like see the, the beautiful thing about you and I'll be like, I'll plant my flag in that. And then I feel like I'm just kind of Ignoring <laughs> dealing everything. with the, the other, other side, stuff. Right. 
And it's like I had a um, I had a therapist tell me she was like, you know, you see the candle in everybody, but you cannot light anyone's candle. Ooh. And I was like, Ugh, Ooh. my neck, my neck. She came from my whole neck, and it's <laughs> like, you know, in my work, I really inspire. I really aspire to inspire. You know, in my stand up, in my Instagram, on my podcast, Small Doses, which you can listen to right now. <laughs> Go to smalldosesshow.com. We're on, in, we're on iTunes, Spotify, et cetera. Um, I seek to use humor and intellect to inspire and inform. And that's my work. You put the candy in the medicine very well. Oh, you put the medicine in the, candy in the candy very well. Spoonful of sugar. But that's my work. Right. But then you realize that, like, you don't want to be doing that at home. Like, mm. the people in my circle, like, I don't need to, like, light their fires. We're all like, <laughs> like right. you know, like, I, and that's, that's not my role. That may be roles for other people, but for me, like the people in my circle, like they all have lit fires. We're all like, egg, you know, urging each other on and supporting each other. And it's not just women, you know, but everybody that I'm around in a close quarters has become people who are self-motivated and who have their own ambitions that may not mirror mine, but that mirror my intensity. And gotcha. we are able to have an exchange. And I, realized that I didn't have that. And when I didn't have that, I found myself frustrated all the time. Like you have to have people around you who mirror the things about you that you love about you. When did you get to the point where you realized like you had to protect your energy at all costs and, and watch the energy that's around you? I mean, I've had people tell me that all my life, but very recently as I've had more visibility, I've come to understand that because it's not even just protecting the energy around you, but the protecting the energy you put out. I've been talking about this on my Instagram. So, like, Envy, like, you met me when I was fresh out of college. Mm -hmm. So I was 21. I was just learning. Like, I just basically married knowledge and rage. Mm. <laughs> so I'm basically a weapon. But they, they, they say to be an aware <laughs> black person in America is to be in rage all the time. I, yes. I think James Baldwin said that. Yes. Like so as a black woman, it's like... You come into spaces where they just really don't want, like, they're not here for that in any shape, way, or form. And I was trying to figure out, like, how to, like, wrangle that. And Envy would many times have to be like, yo, chill. Like, when, you, when you were woke before woke was being cool, before cool, before people saying I'm woke was cool, like, she was all about empowering women, empowering herself. But sometimes she she just did it like Black Panther style, guns out, blazing. <laughs> I always I'm respected that though. Like for what so for whatever reason, I've always understood that about you. Like I understood exactly what you were doing. I've never had a problem with but it. But she would shoot everybody. Like it was, yeah, it was like kids, <laughs> grandmother, <laughs> everybody. Because it never yeah, was for no reason. Like I never no. seen you walking no, no, around. No, like, everybody get the fuck out! I want purple M and M's. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was always for a even reason. though my name was Amanda Diva. Like the, it wasn't rooted in just gratuitous divaism. divaism. Yeah. But what I've come to realize, though, is that, you know, you got to choose those. You got to mm -hmm. choose how you go into certain battles. It's not just choosing the battle. It's choosing how you go into that battle. You know, and some battles require guns blazing and some battles require like, let me be in a Valentino with a blush lace mm -hmm. and a natural face. You know, like, let me go in unassuming because there's times I always say with the Caitlyn Jenner situation, I was going to wear a dashiki. I was going to walk up in there. <laughs> I was going to walk up in there looking like this. And it would have been a whole different outcome because I feel like they would have already been on like, when's she, right? when she going to come for us? And I purposely was like, let me simmer down and give them just like a hello. Well, what so you happened? did the most effective approach in certain situations. You're like, this is the most effective way. For and me that to get saves my point the across. energy. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Now, what happened with Russell Simmons? What, what was the situation with Russell? The situation with Russell was that I was at his office because his, I guess, I don't know what Hassan's like actual like title is, but he works very close with Russell. He's worked with him for a, quite a long time. And I was shooting the second season of my web series, Get Your Life, which mm -hmm. you donated to. Thank mm -hmm. you. And um, I needed a space to shoot an office scene. Okay. And so uh, Hassan had hit me up randomly and I was like, oh, you know what? Do you know? Because he's lived in L.A. longer. I was like, do you know anywhere that I could shoot that? And he was like, oh, you should come by the office and see about maybe shooting in the uh, all-deaf digital offices. So I came by and, you know, I've known Russell since I was on Deaf Poetry Jam when I was 19 and... I've, I mean, we've all been in this business forever, mm -hmm. so you kind of just see stuff. I did a lot of the the voting stuff that he was doing uh, back when he was doing all that stuff. Uh, and so I went, and I was sitting in his office, and uh, we were talking about Insecure. And he was saying, you know, big ups on Insecure, and, you know, I really like the show. I like what you're doing so on the show. this is recent. This is recent, recent. Yeah, this was... 
2016. Sheesh, okay. Yeah, and he was like, I really like you on Insecure. I, you know, I see what y'all doing, da da da. Um, he was like, oh, you know, Amanda, have we ever fucked? Jesus Christ. And I was like, this is why I left hip hop. <laughs> This is why I left hip hop. Maybe he ate a little piece of meat that day. Little, <laughs> little, little, little and I and I, you know, and so this is what happens in those moments, oh, wow. though. This is what happens in those moments. And I know a lot of women out there. I'm sure men do know about this too. But I'm speaking as a woman. Mm-hmm. In that moment, you have to really sit and think: like, am I going to let this moment of their ignorance screw up my vision mm. of what I need to happen? I need to shoot this scene. In mm. an office. So what was your reply? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, well, I mean, oh, right. Because I would remember that. So it was like there was even another cap. Like, Yikes. <laughs> and, and, and you just, and I'm just sitting there so like. So you dead serious. It was no joke. It was not, ha ha, no. That's still not funny. I mean, it's not, it's still, it's still no funny. not funny. No shot or nothing. It was just. I think to him serious. it's humorous because mm-hmm. he said this to people before. So I think for him wow. it's like, you know, I'm a comic. Like you have bits. <laughs> and I think that was like yeah, one they, of his th- uh, kind of sticky things. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why it didn't register to anybody in the room as problematic, you know, because they're just like, oh, that's Russ. Like he's just doing his Russ thing. Mm-hmm. But for me, Especially having been out of hip hop so long now, it's so much sharper because, like, I don't experience that in the comedy space. Right. And I really remember. Really? I don't. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. I don't. It absolutely happens. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Well, people know not to play with you, though. At this point, yes. Yeah, yeah. And in the hip hop space, though, we know mm-hmm. you experience it all day long, and there is no human resources for hip hop. I have so many stories. I always say, one day I'm going to write a book called Your Favorite Rapper is a Lame. Mm. <laughs> and it'll literally ju- it'll literally just be text messages to my T-Mobile sidekick that I've gotten over the years, you know, and poems because I've gotten two. Um, and you know, so cr- hip hop has encouraged that be- kind of behavior. Think yes. about how many songs you've heard, like, is we fucking or what? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and and, and you can't like fight this battle as one person, right? So also, like, as I'm sitting in that office. You're also in someone else's office. And so it kind of does feel kind of crazy to like then now be on them like, yo, like what you, you know, so it it definitely is always funny to me when people say like, why don't you say anything? Right. There's so many reasons, valid, regular reasons why you don't say anything. And I love it because most of the people who say that are people who don't say shit. Like, why are you saying something about me saying something as opposed to talking about rape? Why haven't you ever mentioned anything about rape or sexual assault or Mm -hmm. rape culture up until this moment? Why Mm. is it questioning me that is bringing your voice out as opposed to questioning this whole thing that's been happening forever? Now, let me ask you this. I will say a lot of guys didn't know, though. No way. I think about, uh, like, what exactly entailed rape culture. A lot of things that were normal. Like, even Russell saying that to you, he probably been saying that to you for years and just thought it was, like, normal. Literally, Hassan hit me and was like, he was just being flirty. And I was, and mind you, they've they've written an affidavit saying that none of this happened, and of course, (laughs) it happened. I don't lie about shit, but they definitely um, thought that that was just like like jovial, like. And you ever spoke to him after at all? Spoke to who? Or seen Russell? Or spoke to me or anybody? No. In passing, nothing. Mm -mm. Now you see, there's a woman who recently did an interview right on Megyn Kelly's show, saying that Russell Simmons raped her twice. Yeah. And those are her allegations. He's saying everything he's ever done is consensual. But mm. she talks about a situation where she was doing a documentary or a film and she went to go interview him. And after interview, he was like, oh, can you hang behind? I want to talk to you. And she said that was the first incident in 2011. And then she said in 2016, she went back to see him because he said something about funding her film and trying to help her with it. And then it happened again. And, and then, she's suing him and for some, $5 million. And some people mm-hmm. feel like she shouldn't have gone back. That So that was a discussion that we were having here because, you know, I think she blamed herself. I was literally about to say that. Sometimes women blame themselves. Like, I shouldn't have been in that position. I just got to take that L. Yeah. I'm trying to get this film done. <laughs> and... You know, you don't even know what to say. Like, what am I going to say about Russell Simmons doing something to me? Look at that. I mean, I literally just said he said something to me and people were like, oh, Russell ain't trying to fuck you. Get out of here. <laughs> like, he look up for your whole neck. You know, and you're just like, what are y'all? Like, stop it. No, but that's the thing. There's, there's also like the fact that we, a lot of women, for myself, I can say, like, we respect people's work that they've done. 
and the positions they're in, and we respect hip hop. And as a black woman, like I'm not trying to like just take somebody down mm -hmm. in in the public eye, you know, unnecessarily. Like for me, like yeah, that was a whack situation, but it wasn't enough for me to be like, let me go on right. blast and mm -hmm. put it, you mm -hmm. know. Like I literally only mentioned it because people kept asking me, what do you think about what's going on with Russell Simmons? Mm -hmm. What do you think about what's going on with Russell Simmons? What do you think about what's going on with Russell Simmons? And I said, well. Remember when I mentioned this last week where I hadn't said his name? Yeah. I this said, is who I was talking about. This is what it was, who I was talking about, so that lets you know what I think. What about Aziz Ansari's situation? See, that? that hmm, I think that... In his situation, just if people don't know, yeah. um, he met this woman, a photographer. She went over his house. She said she gave some nonverbal cues that she wasn't interested. She said he kind of chased her around the apartment, and then... At, uh, I don't know what that really means. She said that I think they like they hiding performed go oral or she performed oral. I can't remember. <laughs> no, because he's like fun. Like, you know, he's like. I mean, he woke go. naked around the house. Hey, yo, we've all been there, yo. You got a girl at the house and y'all naked. You like, can we? But then you're going um, gonna to be on it. You know, she I guess he said to her, look, if we're both not having fun, then this isn't right. And she left. He well, no, they actually no, they watched, uh, they watched TV. Yeah, they, together. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, they watched TV yeah. and then she left. And then she sent him a text message, and he sent her back a message apologizing, saying that he wasn't aware, you know, whatever. Now, what do we think about that? Because some people are saying, well, now she is, like, about to ruin his whole legacy, and it doesn't feel like he did anything necessarily wrong. But some people are saying he should have picked up on those cues if a woman's not interested, and she felt pressured because she's a young photographer, and she was in an uncomfortable situation. I think there's, there's a couple things with that. I think there is actual, like, legitimate cause to say like you need to be aware of your position as like someone of authority in a situation and how that you know carries out with other people but I think there's also something to be said for like women having agency you know we have agency to um to say no and we in certain situations lose that agency and that's when it becomes rape right when we say no and that's ignored but in her situation it doesn't it doesn't seem from what's been said that that is the case and that it was more so that she was uncomfortable, like maybe maybe she felt uncomfortable like that it would hurt his feelings or that she didn't necessarily have like the language to know how to say no. Because I know sometimes it's like you don't know, you don't want to burn the bridge, but you don't know how to like get out. So yeah. you're trying to figure out like how to not be rude because listen, can we still be cool. Yeah, like women are raised. We're still raised in this day and age to like not ruffle feathers mm -hmm. and not make it awkward and you know not make men. We don't want you to have feelings, mm -hmm. you know. So we don't want to make you uncomfortable. And so you're trying to figure out. Like I'm a linguist, so I feel like I'm pretty good with like finding the language. But I completely understand. Like as a younger woman with this person that you do admire and that you do want to work with, it's like, how do I navigate these waters? Um, but I don't, but as valid as that is, it wasn't sexual assault according to what I've heard. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it was a dude acting up, um, doing the most and that he wasn't checked. And I think he gave some trash ass head and she was sick of that, sick of it and wanted to go home. I had that happen recently. And I learned, <laughs> <laughs> I learned, I learned this from you and my homegirl Rachel too. Sometimes women are in these positions and y'all feel like y'all have to sleep with the yes. guy. Yes. Just to get him to go. I was like, Yes, wow. you're just like, oh pity my sex. God. Especially, yeah, like I've definitely. You have to sleep with him I've never heard of pity pussy. <sighs> you're just like, this will end so much faster if I just do this. Like I've had someone Damn, who was giving, I've had someone giving me head and been like, and it was like just bad. And I was like, you know what, maybe, I should just have sex. Yeah, maybe I should just have sex. Maybe Don't I'll... tell guys that, because then they're going to think that they Maybe that would be better. Give trash and, <laughs> and then just have sex and, But you know what? So it's funny you say that, because after that instance, I felt so whack. <laughs> I remember walking and just feeling like like Sarah McLaughlin was playing. Like, it was just like... <laughs> <laughs> like, I always reference Sarah McLaughlin for like those times I'm just like in the arms of an angel. I feel so much better right now if I was in those arms. Like, and I just felt really dirty because I realized that I had not used my agency and I had let someone else like deter me from doing what I felt comfortable doing. And... Um, oh, you just did what you want and it was whack. No, but I didn't really... like. I didn't really want, I was just kind if of in a situation it, if like, I could have gotten gotcha, out of it. Gotcha, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. And at the end of the day, I was like, don't let that happen again. And I found myself in a similar situation, you know, a couple of years later with somebody who was like, I bet you if I give you head, you won't let me hit. And I was like, I bet you I won't. And <laughs> What um, kind of game is this? <laughs> <laughs> and 
And sure enough, and sure enough, after I was like, all right. <laughs> we had a baby. <laughs> Ta-da. And he put a pillow on his head and would not talk to me. And it was a rapper. Wow. wow. So that'll be a feature story in my book. Hey, that's the risk you take as a man, though, because that's a man's trick. Let me put the tip in or let me just eat it. That's a risk you take. But you know what? The problem is, is like sometimes you take L's. Like that's what life is. <laughs> like you take risks, you know? Sometimes the reward is greater than the risk. But I feel like women are way more willing to take risks than dudes because like dudes take a risk on one chick and it goes wrong and they're like, I hate women forever. Yeah. Women, I consider myself like, Someone had said a comment on the last time I was on the show, and they were like, yo, it's like, she keep taking L's from niggas, but she keep coming back strong. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, thanks, fam. Because it's true. Like, I just seem to have this, like, unending level of resilience in, like, oh. I just take the L's and I keep on coming back. Like, <laughs> last time you were you in a relationship, right? I was starting one that has since deteriorated. Yeah. Uh, well, because. Is that the guy with the trash ass head? No. Oh, no, okay. damn. No. But he just has a trash ass character. True. Seems like the beginning of relationships are always <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> it's always. But you know what? It's just that as I'm learning about myself, and like I'm a late bloomer, you know, like I feel like I came into myself in terms of like my intellect and mm -hmm. like you said, like my awareness and my wokeness way earlier than I came into like my aware of my power as a woman and my femininity and even just in dealing with dudes and finding better ways to exchange with men to get a better response, not like in a manipulative way, but just in like a more compassionate way. Mm -hmm. um, but if you are being compassionate with somebody and they're just meeting it with deference, you know, and they're not really listening, it ends up being like, well, I can't keep giving you compassion. I just got to give you my back. And I, and I always say like, people push you and then get surprised when you trip. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, dudes, I'm speaking about dudes because that's who I date. Dudes will absolutely drive you to crazy and then get out the car and be like, how do we Why get you tripping, here? Yo? Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's like, they'll make you crazy and then call you crazy and can call you crazy. And <laughs> I, I'm, I'm always just like, how are we so not seeing how are we so distant on seeing like how this landed here? And I talk about it in my stand up, you know, just like at this point, I've realized like I have to be very particular about who I'm letting in my space, who I'm letting in my body. And all of us, like as you get older, like you absolutely like change in terms of who yeah, you're going to let you should. in. Mm -hmm. You know, I talk about like I look at dudes now like I look at the side of a cereal box. I want to know your nutritional value. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like, what kind of artificial flavoring? <laughs> exactly. Are in like Chemicals. what is your daily <laughs> suggested dose of crazy baby mama? Like what is that in your life? Because I'm going to have to have to deal with that, you know, and like. Do you have tax returns? Um, yeah. You know, and, and you have tax like, returns. all of these things. Everything you're saying is real. I got homeboys, and they be mad that <laughs> women are in love with them. But I'm like, bro, you was you just been living with her. Like, like, like you took like, her to see dolphins. Like, <laughs> I had a dude legit was like, I was just being a nice guy, bro. <laughs> if you being a nice guy, take me to Cheesecake Factory. Like, you can't take me on a trip to Laguna and see dolphins <laughs> on a boat and then be on some like, why would you like me? Why would you like me? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, don't, yeah. and it's like, you don't have to be a dick, but it's like, just be aware of the feelings. Like, I think like there's a lot of emotional manipulation that goes on where I get, I had a homeboy that I'm not even talking to him right now and he's just my homeboy because I realized like, you're being selfish and you're misleading women. Like, your mm. life is trash right now, but you dating and if you want to date, fine, but then you're like, consistently dating one person and now that person wants to be in a relationship with you right. and now it's three months into y'all seeing each other and you're like, yo, my life is trash. I can't do this. That's not fair. You're a woman either regardless of how good you treat the woman. Well, what we say on Insecure? You the worst kind of fuck nigga. Mm. You think you a good nigga. Ooh. Mm. Ooh. Wow. You know? Now I want to ask about your, your stand-up. Now do you ever, you're doing stand-up. She's at Caroline's this weekend. You're doing Caroline's this weekend. weekend. Thursday, Friday, Thursday and Saturday. Saturday. Yes. Um, Headlining. Headlining! One show Thursday, and... two shows Friday, two shows Saturday. Do you get nervous doing stand-up at all? Especially in New York. As long as you don't take calls and argue with people right before you go on stage, you'll be fine. <laughs> You've been watching my Instagram. <laughs> I do not argue before I go on stage. Let's start that. Because that gets you anxious. You know, you out of your, your comfort zone. No, I won't say I get nervous as opposed... The only time I got nervous recently was got opened for Chris Rock. Mm. Ooh. And when I opened for... Tell us about that. What was that? New York, that was in L.A.? That was in L.A. So you opened up for... Wow. I opened up for Chris. Tell us about that one. So I basically was just very fortunate the way the stars aligned. I 
met Chris. It was crazy when I met him because he walked up to me with his arm stretched. I'm on the side, like, because there's so few people at this point for me to meet that'll still be like, mm -hmm. and he was one of them. And I was just standing there and he came up arm stretched open and he was like, what's up? It's on and I'm like, and he's not even friendly like that. He's a great like guy, that. though. Great, <laughs> humble guy, man. Yeah, and he, like, hugged he's, me. He's he was like, now. He was like, you're great on Insecure. And I was like, oh, my God, really? And I was like, mm -hmm. but I'm not even, like, on there, on there, like, on the time. And he was like, you seeing I'm going to get you, sucker? And I was like, yeah, one rib. How much one rib? And he was like, <laughs> exactly. I was in the movie for two and a half minutes, and you remember it. So he was wow. like, you know, it's, there's mm -hmm. no small roles. It's just about how big you make your roles. And it's like, man, you already dropping gems. I've been talking to you for two seconds. And... I was like, well, can I open for you? <laughs> Go for it. Shoot that shot. Get right to it. Right. 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 Get right to it. Let me get right to it. DJ Brown does it all the time. I mean, listen. You're going to have every comedian going up to him now, but go ahead. <laughs> no, it's like I was in a space, though, where I had kind of been vetted to get, in, to get close enough to even say that, and I felt like I... I, I, as a comedian, you feel the room. That's literally what you do. So mm -hmm. I felt the room, and I was like, you could say this. He came out with arm stretch. Right, right. And he literally was like, put Amanda up for L.A. And that's wow. why I rock yeah. with, like, it was like. How much preparation did you have when he said, was it L.A. like the next day, or did you have a I week? had three weeks. Okay. But I was doing 20 minutes. Ooh, that's a and long time. Woo. 20 minutes, I mean, it is and it's not. It's like for 20 minutes when you're doing just like a regular day, it's like you know that maybe five to seven of that is at least is going to be just stuff you're working on. You know, but twenty for opening for Chris Rock needs to be all like special, hit, 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 all hits, yeah. <laughs> all hits. Right. In that moment, are you worried about? Of course, you're worried about making the crowd laugh, but are you also worried about impressing Chris? Absolutely. Yeah. So, Pete, I, I had the opportunity to do a bunch of sets, so I got ready. I, I performed. It was, per like, it was perfect, y'all. Mm -hmm. Like, I wish that it was taped, but it's just one of those things that you just have to like remember it, like the '90s, yeah. you know, where. Things <laughs> <aren't>. <laughs> <laughs> like, and um, I had my girls there, and it was just like, like I could cry right now. How how you you have these times in your life that you are like, if if I get to experience that, what's it gonna be like? And then when it lives beyond that, you're like, oh my god! And so I opened. I did a fantastic set. When I came off stage, he was just like, yo, you fun. He was like, you funny. That was funny. He's like, no, for real. That was good shit. And then I saw him later. And he reiterated. And as a comedian, what I love about comedy, because I used to be in music, and what I hated about music was that you never really knew if it was a compliment. Because people would be like, it's hot. I really like your energy. Right. You know, like, it's hot. That like, was different. I, I like that vibe. <laughs> that was different. It's interesting. In comedy, there's one compliment. You're funny. funny. Laughing, yeah. right. Because even if you'd be like, eh, it was all right. Nah. You're funny. Yeah. That's all. And when someone says that, you can rock with that and keep it moving. And so then I come off stage and I hear the click, clack, Click clack of heels of Durangos. And I knew that's Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy's still wearing Durangos? Yes. <laughs> and I turn around. <laughs> <laughs> and I turn around. And I and like he was walking away and I was like, don't let the moment pass, don't let the moment pass. Mr. Murphy! And he turned now around. Mind you, that's the LA show where the, Dr. Dre was that night. It was Eddie Kardashians Murphy, were in the front Kardashians, seat. Kardashians, all of them. And I have a Kardashian joke. So they was right there. And my friend said that, that Chris was like, they in the front. They in the front row. <laughs> like when I said the joke. Yeah, and Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy was like, hey. And he came up and he was like, um, you were just on stage, right? And I said, yeah. And he was like, oh, I missed your set. But Chris says you're really funny. That's uh, all you need. That means it. they're talking about yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Woo! Because that's when you know it's real. Yes. That's right. You're telling somebody else. Because yeah. the realest conversations about you happen behind your back. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And... You know, I've been in this business a long time. Like, I would say I've been SAG since 92. I've done a lot of stuff. But once I got to stand-up, it was the first time I felt like I was at home. Mm. You know, like, I'm mm -hmm. a hip-hop head, but stand-up felt like home. It's like, oh, I'm not a misanthrope. I've just been a comic this whole time. Mm. I do oh, it's not that I don't like people and that I don't know how to talk to people and that I'm mean. I'm just a comic. Like, mm -hmm. I'm just, this is how I filter my, my view of the world. And, you know, we are, like, a different species of human and we have to be aware at all times and it's just a different way of life to have to be constantly you know just on you're just you're always aware of like okay what's going how that is that funny you know to the point where my friends at this point will be talking and be like oh that's a bit like they even know when to recognize like put that that's a bit and um and so for me to reach this point and in such a short time, like, you know, I've seen comics who've been doing this for such a long time and I have a certain level of survivor's remorse because I'm just like, damn, like you've advanced fairly quickly. But I also know, and as you all know, like I've been on stage mm -hmm. and on a mic in Amanda Seals voice for years. Mm -hmm. 
So by the time I got to stand up, it wasn't so much about trying to find my comfort on stage or my ability to read a crowd. It was literally just like, how do you find your comedic voice? And what I've discovered is that, you know, for all intents and purposes, I'm a TED Talk with jokes. Right. <laughs> you're going to get some information. You're going to get some foolishness, you know, but you're going to laugh your ass off. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be 100% authentic. And I come from the school of, like, my comedy is inspired by Chris Rock. Like, mm-hmm. that is who I looked to in terms of how to develop how I want to say things. And then you come to your own space. And, like, when I have audiences come to stand-up shows, like, it's always dope to me when they're like, yo, like, that show was mad funny. I even learned some shit. And I'm like, aha. Got gotcha, him. bitch. Do you flirt with doing the idea of doing music anymore at all? It's funny. Robert Glasper is on my podcast this week on uh, Small Doses. And I told him, I was like, when I come back to music, if I ever do, it'll be with you. So no more flow tree. I think I would love to come back to music in like a different way, like with a musical, mm-hmm. you know, or in a film that has mm-hmm. music in it. Um, but like as far as like being in like the music biz you know, or like, remember when Queen Latifah was just like, I'm going to do a jazz album. Right. Uh, like, <laughs> um, maybe like in that space where you're just like, I can do this because like I, I I'm me that. and I feel like it. So, but stand up is um, right now, I feel like it's the last bastion of hope for like real truth and conversation to happen without the overhead of a, of corporate pressure. Well, when you I, go to a stand-up show, you're going to get it. I know you watch a lot of stand-up, and, you know, how, how do you feel about Dave Chappelle getting backlash for, like, his transgender jokes or the Louis C.K. joke where he talked about how the girl say Louis C.K. masturbated in front of her and ruined her comedy phone. dreams, and he was like, well, madam, you never had a dream. You know, do you think comedians should be allowed to speak more freely without backlash? Oh, I think there's... I think you should always expect backlash if you say something. I mean, that's just what it is. You go outside, you might get rained on. Oh, trust me, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the backlash shouldn't be, oh, don't say that. The backlash is just like, that wasn't funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, like, to me, I just feel like certain things, I'm like, it's not offensive unless it's funny. You know, like, there's, that's the whole skill. Chris Rock says a lot of stuff that is considered offensive, but he frames it in a space that makes it Funny. You know, you like think. Ricky Gervais, it's people smart. hated Ricky Gervais hosting the um, Golden Globes. I loved Ricky Gervais hosting the Golden Globes, and I think he's brilliant. Yeah. And it is a dream of mine to work with him if he is watching The Breakfast Club. So, you know, I think it's really just about framing. I, You know, for all intents and purposes, I think Dave has a unique voice in how he presents things. Those were not my favorite mm-hmm. presentations of Dave's work. You know, I feel like when he did his shows at Radio City... Um, he did like a series of shows here at Radio City mm-hmm. and that was more like classic Dave in terms of setup and stories and, you know, jokes. And that to me was just like the pinnacle. And this felt more conversational style. Mm-hmm. So I think that's also the reason why people take offense to it, too, because it doesn't feel like a joke. It felt like you just talking and I don't like what you're saying. So I get to talk about it now. Got you. We, we, we sparked a conversation here, speaking of backlash, about colorism. Ah, OK, yes. when, when, when Mr. Marilyn Negra was here. Uh, have Bye. being light skinned helped your career? <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? No, because or, or even insecure, <laughs> you're the only light skinned female, right? That I can think Correct. of. Correct. You are. Yeah. Um yeah. I think help is a strong word. I mean, I think there's always things that happen outside of your consciousness. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if there have been conversations outside of my awareness that may have been rooted in that. Right. But it's in, not like you were like, I'm light skinned, do I get the job? Right. <laughs> like it was never that. I mean, but I think that when it comes to colorism, colorism is an actual real thing that is rooted in how darker skinned people are discriminated against. And I don't think being light skinned makes you a part of the colorism conversation in terms of someone who is being uh, discriminated against for your skin color. But I do think that there is still a unique space that happens when you are a light skinned person within the black community and within society. You think it's different for women than it is for men, too? No, I mean, I think as far as light skinned men, because I feel like the perception of men when it comes to color is different than it is for women. I think there's still like this kind of idea that like light skinned dudes is pansy. Right. You know, and like all of y'all are Christopher Williams. But is it a stereotype if it's true? <laughs> I'm looking at you right now. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm looking at you right now. I, just, I mean, you know, I find it hard that Charlamagne could call me a beige bitch. <laughs> He's so mad and he bitch. can't say that. And you can't say Waffle anything back. And if I say anything back, but that's my it, that's, oh my god, that's part of my issue that I feel like 
All of this comes from an outside source. Colorism is not rooted in black people. It's once again, as usual, rooted in a divisiveness that's created by an oppressor. Right. And mm. so then we internalize it within ourselves. And now we just fight amongst ourselves while they over there like, ha ha, your mom's in jail. So is yours. Want to play? That's the Simpsons. But I <laughs> <laughs> that's the Simpsons. But I just feel like we have to get a handle on this. You know, I think the whole situation with you and the, the Afro Latina colorism community was just simp- people don't know that you're a nigga from South Carolina mm-hmm. and that you really just haven't been exposed to those conversations and people are like but he knows a lot of Latinas and I'm like but he's not those aren't the conversations that you're having no. with the Latina women no, you know you're not asking them like so like what's your experience you know as an Afro Latina and no. I know that maybe they want you to do that but that's just I don't I would be surprised so I I was listening to you like oh I hope that they have a further conversation about this because I think that there's a lot of Americans that People don't, don't want know that this. conversation anymore though they they don't want that conversation well, I if think... you ask somebody something and you don't know then you're dumb then you're Uncle Tom you should know or you're extra yeah, yeah and but that, I mean that's, that's even when like I said when and Dasha Polanco actually hit me about this because mm-hmm. she came up here and she talked about being Afro Latina explained it then but with the Mara La Negra if even if she's telling us something that maybe you weren't aware of it is worth listening to and absolutely and. Mm-hmm. This is her experience. This is her saying, this is what happens to me. And it is true. Like, I went and researched it. If you look at the telenovelas, you see oh, yeah. it's all women that look Sofia like Vergara. blue eyes and, <laughs> you know, blonde hair. Or they are very fair skin. And she was saying, even auditioning, they were telling her you could be a slave, slave. or a prostitute. Oh, mm-hmm. But you can't get that lead role. So if that's an issue that's still happening and she's saying, this is my experience, this is what happened, you know, then you're like, okay, I had no but idea. But I know this Negro, <laughs> and I knew when he was check when he was questioning her, I was like, he's not even. I know him. Like he's asking something else that he's not really asking right now. And we had a separate conversation. And I wish people would also understand that who are listening and who are watching, like, you're not gonna get access to every conversation that happens between people in the public space. Like mm-hmm. it's just not the way it is. And people feel like they have a right to you. They have a right. they they have a like a, a, a they deserve. They're entitled to like everything about you because you're in the public space. And sometimes you just need to trust that. Like if I had a conversation with the nigga and mm-hmm. we're still cool, you should be cool. Like I have enough of a track record at this point mm-hmm. to know that like I'm not out here just running around with the internet niggas. But I know you hear guys say things like, oh, I only like, <laughs> <laughs> I only like light-skinned girls. So I, that's real. Like, dudes. And guys really say that in songs, everywhere. Yes, I had a dude be like, you know, I don't understand why you single. Like, you you re- literally said, you light-skinned, yellow even. So <laughs> I was like, bruh, yellow even. And I, like, I'm hyper aware of the disparities. Like, you would never have caught me playing Nina Simone. Cause I feel like get out of here. Like mm-hmm. that's that's just crazy. But that would just be bad casting, though. In my opinion, yes, yeah. it was bad casting. But mm-hmm. it's literally about having the consciousness, though, to know that a lot of the people who are making these decisions don't have the access to the knowledge of colorism that I have internally, being a black woman in this space. But you know, it, there's just there's just a lot of like misinformation that happens, and a lot of emotions that happen, and like. There's a difference between the argument and debates. And, like, we don't have enough debates anymore. Like, debates are fact-based, you know, conversations from mm-hmm. opposing sides. Arguments is when emotion comes in. Right. And that's why, like, you don't have debates with your 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 spouse or your partner. You have arguments because mm-hmm. you're not only debating the issue, but you're arguing because you're just like, not only are we debating this issue, but I don't even like the fact that you have this issue, nigga. Yeah. And so... You want to win in that, in that case. You don't care about But your emotions right are, right. like, rooted in, like, the fact that, like, you like this person, but you don't like what they're saying. Whereas, like, a debate is just like... I don't even know you. I don't even know you. And we should be able to just have an exchange and agree to disagree. We have debates yeah. like where Charlamagne will be like, no, this is how I feel about this. And I, I am is standing next sound? to that. that yes. In my mind, that's how he sounds. He's like, because this is the way it is. Is that the list? list? That's yeah, the list. Yeah, He's like, this is the way it is. I think it was bullshit. I think that nigga was tripping. And nah, like, I'm not Straight fucking up. with it. I'm not fucking with it. Straight up. Straight up. And the <laughs> wax is on the side. And he's like, word. I don't even pay attention to what wax is <laughs> saying. And but, then I'll be like, well, no, because I really feel like, you know, and then I get in like my white girl high pitch and I'm like, well, I feel like the real problem is I start using like Columbia words. I'm like, it's just really disdainful and deleterious to the, to the pragmatism of the situation. And then we realize that like we're not going to come to a consensus. And then it's like, all right. You know. All we do, like I like the colorism conversation because at the end of that, what dawned on me was 
the struggles that they've experienced in Latin America are very similar to the struggles that black Americans have faced here in America. Absolutely. So if we both know each other's history, we should we should know that and then use that to come together here in America. But the thing is, you just didn't know her history. I mean, I knew Afro-Latino history, but not to the extent that I think I, I know it I now. just right. found out when I went to Cuba, like, I really didn't understand the extent to which Spain wreaked havoc on this globe. Mm -hmm. You know, I think for what it's worth, we are an American colony that, we were a British colony that became American and so was Grenada in terms of a British colony that became Grenadian. So like my access to colonialism has for the most part been about British rule. Mm -hmm. But then when I was in Cuba, just hearing about how Spain- But that's the conquistadors, right? Um, yeah, the conquistadors, nice, yes, conquistadors mm -hmm. and you know, uh, I don't Why she said nice like you're a third grader? Because that's <laughs> job. a word I mean. Yes. 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 <laughs> Good job. I just I heard the word conquistador on a on a Wednesday morning on a, nice. on a Thursday morning in a minute. So uh, <laughs> but they really like when you think about it and you're like, how many Spanish speaking countries are there? You're like, well, they weren't Spanish speaking until Spain showed up and was like, you speak Spanish now. Mm -hmm. And what had to go down for that to happen. And right. then you have folks in those countries who have completely like disregarded their indigenous, you know, ancestry or their African ancestry and have been like, you know, we're Spanish. And it's like, no, you speak Spanish because of a colonizer. But that was like so to your point though, I just didn't know I just didn't know. Something, and people and were mad on my Instagram when I said I didn't know until I came to Cuba and saw all of this. And people were like, How you don't know that? Right. What's wrong with not knowing? That's how you learn. That's the whole thing. It's just like, but I know so we much don't other know a lot stuff. More than we do I know, know so much Absolutely. other stuff. I know all the words to slob on my knob. I know so go. much <laughs> other <There you> stuff. <laughs> Let me hear it. <laughs> <laughs> Amanda, you know, Amanda. I know a nickel defense. Like I know so much <laughs> other <laughs> stuff. All right. <laughs> So, you know, I can cook. Like, let me live. Sorry. Well, I'm having Amanda's a tantrum. going to be at Caroline's. She will. Thursday, 730. We can literally Friday, sit here and talk to Amanda all day. and 10. Saturday, 730 and 10. Go get your tickets right now. Can we end with one thing? Sure. I just want to know why do we keep falling for the same old Kim Kardashian, Kardashian plays? <laughs> it's the same. It's not even a new playbook anymore. It's nude pics. It's braids every, every what do you year. What do you this consider? I've seen it. It's just, it's just, it's just, a, it's just the old But what do you plays. consider to be falling for? Reacting like, to it, giving them what they want, which is attention. Even me now asking you this question. I think it's the same thing with like the Tommy Lorenz of the world, who you had up here on some fuck shit. That's the only she time that never here. Here. Well, that you talked to. Yes, he went yeah, to that, that was the only time that I was like, this nigga is problematic. <laughs> <laughs> because this Trevor Noah did the same shit right. and I'm like why are y'all giving her a, platform, a right. platform and even if you do give her the platform there just wasn't there was too much reverence you know and it's and that's what ends up happening you get these white women in these spaces and then everyone becomes like really polite and I always feel like politeness in the way of purpose is a problem so the purpose for her being there should have been to like gather her well, it, Up. it was. As a ponytail. But when I came downstairs, TMZ was there. So I'm like, what the fuck? No, that was a f another day that TMZ. No, that was even day. if the TMZ, that should have been, that 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 made something. you even no, more I never went lit. to lunch with her. I actually went to a meeting. They had a meeting with her at Viacom because somebody thought it was going to be a good idea for me and her to do a show together. And I was like, absolutely not. And every woman mm. in Viacom was like, you better not. And we was in the meeting <laughs> having a discussion on why her rhetoric is dangerous for, our, for my people. And what was her response? Well, the conversation that we actually had was about BLM and uh, BLM and Trump supporters. Because, you know, she has this thing where she feels like BLM is anti-police and they're cop killers. And she was based on... You know on what? That. We're already talking Panthers about her too, too much. Okay, We're yeah. already talking about her too much. But she was based on that off one group, one video she saw. She's an idiot. And the real point is that these broads are idiots. These people, not just her, like these folks, like the Tucker Carlson's and these, you know, the Hannity's and all these people, they're idiots. And I completely agree with you. It's like, how do you... How do you manage it? Because I feel like it's a crisis of, it's a crisis of conflict. On one hand, I feel like if you don't say something, it kind of still, like, continues. And if you do say something, like you said, it's like it all it fuels it. So it's like, well, then do we have to we have to change what we say or how we or how we don't say it? And mm -hmm. I don't really know what the answer to that is because the nigga in me has to say something every time, you know, which is why they say. I think masculine. Barack is to blame for a lot of that too, though. And I'm going to tell you why. Remember his last speech where he was like, you should reach across the aisle and talk to people that you have differences with and people you don't agree with. I don't think that he knew this was going to rise. But that was the same thing with Martin Luther King. 
you know, I think Martin Luther King, for all intents and purposes, in the beginning was just like, you know, we we should all be together. You right. know, he yeah, was speaking. Yeah. He he was really wanting unity, and then and then towards the end of his days, he was like, oh, yeah. And by the way, when Martin had that rhetoric, Malcolm was calling him an Uncle Tom, yes. and a coon, and a sellout. Yeah, and then yeah, what yeah. were they doing? Trying to divide. Yeah. You know, and then at the end of the day, everyone comes to the table like, you know, maybe there was a better way. Absolutely. But I think for now, it's like, how do we? There's never going to be like unified group th- group thought because you don't necessarily even want that anyway. Mm-hmm. Like you want there to be levels of individualism and people asking questions and whatnot. But I think that not everybody has the same level of information. And so the the issue with like a Kim Kardashian and whatnot is that you have people who are responding because they're just like, they're pretty. And that's mm-hmm. enough. And then you have people like myself who are just like irritated that they continue to be given attention attention um well i flagged all their pictures i definitely try to uh, i did i did it did nothing they still up one picture went down though i think she she blurred the nipple yeah yeah and then they even did a like a special instagram like put in a special thing that said like if you um are reporting thank you for reporting kim kardashian's photo however like she's not violating our community guidelines with Mm. this photo and i thought that was very like well, actually, it's her own special mm-hmm. guidelines. I definitely tried to flag it like 10 times yesterday. I just think that there's something like to be said for the fact that like when that's all like that's basically like all you're giving, mm-hmm. you know, like people are like, well, Rihanna does that. I'm like, Rihanna has albums mm-hmm. <laughs> and is acting. And, you know, like there's just mm-hmm. more that she's giving to the, to the zeitgeist. Yeah. And uh, I don't think any of them are really like adding to the canon. I know that I, as a comic, I get the opportunity to now, like, add to the canon. With Smart, Funny, and Black, I'm adding to the canon. And, you know, you guys with this show, like, you're continuing to add to conversations. Even if people don't like you, they still listen because they're like, well, I want to have conversations about what I don't like about what they're saying. Right. Bring it. Well, thank you for joining us. Amanda Thanks for Seals. having me, guys. Amanda Amanda dates again for Caroline's. Caroline's, February 1st, 7.30. That's uh, tonight. February 2nd, 7.30 and 10. Saturday, 7.30 and 10. Go get your tickets now. And it's The Breakfast Club. is Miss Amanda Seals.